Hi, this is Marvin Rainwater, and I'd like to welcome you into a sincere and intimate group which constitutes the Marvin Rainwater Friendship Club, the motto of which is, if you want a friend, you must first be one. It is our earnest wish that the motto we have chosen for our club will accomplish what we intend it to, because it is the something we ourselves believe in so very much and that is to do a daily act of kindness without seeking any reward other than to win new friends and retain their friendship and goodwill by acting from the heart rather than scheming for worldly goods of one kind or another. In all of our lives, at one time or another, there appears a personality whom we admire so much for what he or she stands for that we unconsciously adopt this personality as our idol and again unconsciously take the pages from his life's book and weave them into our own book of life. These pages symbolize the very desires of our own hearts. Only we have to have the example set for us. I have an idol such as the one I speak of, a man who lives in the memory of millions, for he passed on long before his time. The immortal I speak of is the late and beloved Hank Williams. Hank became my idol in this business because in his music I discovered all of the emotions and heartbreak I too felt but couldn't express. Having been born with a deep love for music, I already in childhood discovered that I could best of all reach out with my innermost sentiments through this wonderful medium. It was therefore no surprise to my family and friends when in later life I turned to music as a profession. However, at the start and for a long time afterwards, I found it far from easy to establish myself. My friends and family, of course, would listen to my music, and they hoped when I hoped, and they cried when I cried. Relatives and friends are like that because they love you, but I had no outside audience. The more songs I wrote, the more I realized I needed something far more spectacular to attract the attention of the public. And when the man whom I had learned to admire so much came to the end of life's journey, I felt for the first time that I could expose my troubled, crying heart as I had never been able to do before. On the shocking news that Hank Williams would sing no more, I withdrew to myself in grief, and I wrote the words and music that expressed the great, the great loss that I personally felt. The band that recorded this song with me was made up of Mickey and Roger Woodward and a boy named Roy Clark, and on the session, all of us were in tears. We cut this the day after Hank died, and I could cut this song again now in a little different fashion, maybe a little better music, maybe a little better feeling, but it wouldn't have the meaning that it had on January 2nd, 1953. So we're gonna release this song on this friendship record, just like we cut it the day after Hank died. And until now, this song has never been recorded but I did sing it before to those of Hank's mourners who knew of it and they wanted to hear it. And thus, where the widely beloved Hank's journey in life ended, I feel like mine actually began because there were many who requested and listened sincerely to the tribute that I wrote about their idol. And they would then listen to my own songs. And it hurts me deeply that the departure of so great a man spelled my first recognition. And I would gladly sacrifice it all if it were possible to bring Hank back to us. But since this cannot be, I can only promise to take up the torch he laid down and carry it high and blazing to help the way of my fellow man be the good Lord willing. And so, dear friends, as our mutual friendship grows, so will our happiness. I want most of all to feel that I have your kind thoughts and good wishes, just as you have mine always. And to prove my sincerity, by taking an active and personal interest in this, our Bluebird Friendship Club, and inject new ways and means as we go along to promote happiness. And let nothing ever convince you that my friendship is no longer yours, for this shall not be so unless you hear it from my own lips. Yeah.
God must have loved the common man, otherwise he wouldn't have made so many of them. And a boy named Hank Williams loved the common man too, for he sang their song to them and for them, and most important, he sang about them. Now when a man comes to this world, he brings nothing with him, and when he leaves, he takes nothing with him. So actually all a man ever had was his life, and that life he leaves behind with those who stay. For instance, when April showers come your way, Al Jolson won't be too far away. And whenever you wish upon a silvery star, likely as not will be the one Jimmy Rogers has hooked his wagon to. And there's another Rogers that lives in this hall of fame. I never met a man I couldn't like. Will was his immortal name. And now a new picture hangs in this heart's hall of fame. It's a picture of a man who once sang, I'll never get out of this world alive. But every time we hear or sing one of his songs, our hearts will prove him wrong. Ha uh -huh.